Hello, and welcome along to this stream tonight. Um, for those of you who were expecting to see Josh here, I hope that you're not too disappointed. Um, but Josh is not going to be here. Uh, Josh has uh, Josh is not very well, basically, and he opted to not do the stream tonight. So instead, you've got me. Uh, now, that's not to say that I am in no way prepared for this. Um, I've got a rough idea of what I want to achieve tonight, uh, mainly because I was set to do a stream uh, two weeks ago, uh, but I was ill that day. So I've got a rough idea of what, what I want to try to achieve tonight, uh, and I'm going to do that. Um, so what I've got is I am hoping to walk through an entire end-to-end -end process of having an idea about uh, making a contribution into Chocolate Choco, the kind of process you want to walk through in terms of uh, creating an issue, uh, getting buy-in from the team, uh, starting the work, creating a fork, creating a branch, uh, doing some work submitting a PR, et cetera. Now, some of that is going to be similar to uh, the work that uh, Corey and James did in uh, a previous Hacktoberfest uh, shenanigans uh, live stream that we have here. Uh, so some of it will be a recap, uh, but some of it might have an alternative uh, view on things uh, from, my, uh, uh, from my role, if you like, as um, uh, one of the product owners of Chocolatey and, and the senior develop one of the senior developers here, um, I might be able to provide different insights into uh, how things are done and why things are done in a certain way. Uh, so hopefully it will be of some use. Uh, so let's start by making sure that everyone can see my screen. So let me just clear out a few things here and just finish off getting ready. Uh, I was putting my machine together just before we started the stream so i'm hoping that i'm going to have everything set up um so let me just close out a couple of things here and then i will share my screen uh so let's do let's close this out uh that should no longer be there hopefully let's do that okay so let's go ahead and go into here and I will say, share my desktop too. I see a few folks uh, coming in the chat. So if you have got any questions, uh, feel free to uh, reach out. Uh, I am I will do my best to keep an eye on the chat whilst doing a few things here. Uh, but if I could get a thumbs up from one of the folks in the chat just to make sure that you can see my screen, that would be great. Uh, and then we can get started. So let's go here. And let's go over to GitHub and let's get started here. Thank you, Rain. Uh, so my amazing idea for a contribution to Chocolate Choco starts with, uh, let me just make this a little bit bigger as well, starts with uh, a something that PowerShell does. Now, anyone that knows me knows that I am amazing at PowerShell. Um, and what I want to do is I want to bring some of the functionality that exists in specifically the PowerShell help to the Chocolatey help. So let me explain that a little bit. So I have Chocolatey installed on my machine. So I have the latest version of chocolate installed in my machine. And if I say, for example, choco install dash H, then we get quite a lot of information output to us. We get information about what um, command line options can be set. Uh, we get some examples about uh, the, how to run the command. We get examples about, uh, or we get a description of what it does and how it does it. Uh, so there's lots of information in there, but as you can see, there's quite a lot of scrolling involved in there, right? There's quite a lot of data. It's quite dense. Um, there's quite a lot going on there. So there's been some suggestions about how we can improve the output of Choco Help. 
So if we look at something that PowerShell brings to the table, PowerShell has this get help commandlet. And if I run the get help on the get command um, uh, commandlet, so I, I'm running the get help com I'm running the get help commandlet on the get command commandlet, and I get a more condensed output of what that command is, uh, commandlet is, what it does, etc. Now, if I wanted to, there is the option of doing uh, detailed, which gives me a little bit more information that I can parse through. There's another one that I can do full, where I get literally all the information that's available on that commandlet. And then there's another one that I can do, which is just examples. So it gives me a condensed output, but it gives me a specific set of, uh, this is example one, this is example two, et cetera, of how I might run that get command commandlet. Uh, but the one that I'm interested in is if I do the same command, but with the uh, dash online option, then what it'll do is that, that will open in my default browser and it'll take me to the online help documentation for that commandlet. Um, so what I want to do is I want to do the equivalent for uh, Chocolate. So what I want to be able to do is I want to do Choco install uh, dash h for help and i want to pass in for example online and running that i want that to take me over to docs.chocolatey.org and then the url for that is something similar to if i come back in here and go into cli options and go into the commands then down here I want to take me. I, I want. I want that dash dash online option to take me to this page. So this has essentially the same information that I can get from the command line, but it gives it to me on a web page. It might have some additional things in terms of uh, videos. It might have additional uh, uh, resources in terms of what you can do with it. Links off to other pages, etc. So I want this right now. There's already some existing issues on uh, the chocolatey repository for uh, constraining the output of the command. So what I mean by that is what I think would be also useful would be, for example, to be able to run dash dash examples. So I get just the examples for the command. Uh, there's also uh, related to that, I think there's already a suggestion for doing the equivalent of a dash dash detailed. So the default output would give me just the condensed information, and then a dash dash detail would expand to give me all of the information in the command line. So I'm not looking to do that scope of work today because that's quite a lot. Uh, but what I am going to try to do is to at least stub out what needs to be done to run the dash dash online option from the command line. Okay. So we're going, that's the idea, uh, and we're going to go from uh, what do we do to start with? Uh, how do we get buy-in from the team? Um, what do we need to do to start development of that work? Uh, and then let's go through the process of having a look at the code base uh, and going from there. So um, I'm just going to quickly go, go through the chat uh, just to see if there's anything that I need to pick up on. Uh, wrong, I'll bring some trickle help. I don't know what... Choco dash H piping to O dash P does Manfred. Uh, no idea. I don't know what that does. Um, uh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, have I missed the PowerShell wizard? You have. It's all gone, uh, Chris. It, it was it was it was all done within the first nine minutes. So we're going to go into C sharp next. Um, so uh, so where do we start? Right. So the starting point for um, making a contribution into Chocolate E is creating an issue. Um, pretty much everything in Chocolatey uh, from a repository management point of view, from uh, this is what we're working on point of view, this is where the project planning comes into play, it all boils down to uh, issues on the repository. So whether that is uh, directly on the Chocolatey Choco repository, or whether that's on one of the other repositories within the Chocolatey organization, except everything boils down to an issue. Right, so there's quite a lot of issues. Uh, there's an active scope of work, which is to uh, better triage the issues so that we get them down to a more manageable list. But for now, if I were to search for help within here, then one of these is 
one of these uh, is specifically around, uh, there's quite a few, that's, I, I need to refine the search a little bit. I'm almost convinced that there is a uh, issue in here for truncating the output of the help command, uh, but I'm relatively sure that there's not uh, one for uh, online help. So let's just maybe try and see if there is not one. PowerShell function should have a, that's a similar one, but not quite the same thing. Um, so no, I'm going to work on the premise that there is um, not an issue for that. So if I was an external contributor to uh, Chocolate Repository, what I might want to do is I might want to go over to our uh, Discord channel. So we are our Discord server. So you can get to that via uh, HTTPS uh, chaw.co uh, slash community. Now, I don't have Discord on this machine, so I can't open it up. But if you were to go to that URL, uh, maybe someone will put it into the chat so that there's a link to it. Uh, we have uh, various different channels on that Discord server. And in there, you could open up a conversation about, uh, well, this is what I want to do. Then you could have some dialogue with uh, community members, perhaps with one of the team members. And they might say, oh, that's a great idea. Let's move forward with that. Uh, alternatively, there is a discussions section within the chocolate choco organization the uh, chocolate chocolate choco repository uh, on github so if again if you wanted to raise a discussion to get some buy-in from uh, again community members and or team members you could absolutely go through a discussion and do that and what they will likely do myself included would be oh that's a great idea can you please create an issue for that so that we can track it so that's what i'm going to do now so i'm going to go over to the issues and i'm going to create an issue now, what's going to happen here is you're going to be presented with a, um, these are the templates that we would really like you to follow. Um, the, the templates have been created in such a way that we're trying to capture all of the pertinent information for um, making sure that we can interact on that issue, that we don't have to go backwards and forwards in terms of, well, can you give me this information? Can you, can you give me this information? So it's incredibly important if you're reporting an issue to capture all of the information that's in that template. Uh, but for this one, I'm trying, I'm going to suggest that we have an enhancement or a feature request. Okay. So I'm going to click the uh, get started on the enhancement and feature, feature request one. And then here, uh, this is where the template comes into play. So we break it into sections of uh, what you want to do is a related issue, additional context, etc. So we, we just start filling that out. Uh, so one of the first things to do is to remove, having read through it, um, it'll point you at the uh, code of conduct, read through the code of conduct. Uh, we do have a, a CLA, a, a contributor license agreement that will be required to be signed for a code contribution into uh, Chocolate Choco. Uh, so go through that. If you haven't read through that before, definitely take a look at that. It's got in information on how to submit issues, uh, how to make a code contribution, et cetera. Uh, so definitely go through and read through some of that. Uh, I wrote some of that, so I'm going to assume that I know what it says. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start going into the specifics about the feature request. Uh, so the first section there is, is your feature request related to a problem? It sort of is. Um, uh, I believe that there is a lot of, uh, let's say, a lot of output from the, from the, we'll get my keyboards in the right place, Choco help, uh, or the Choco dash H command. And I would like to be able to navigate to the online version of the, um, help documentation similar to what can be done from PowerShell. Uh, and then for example, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then we'll give an example of what you can do in PowerShell. So that's get help, get command, I'll get there eventually, dash uh, online. Describe the solution, why is it needed? Uh, this would 
make it much easier to get the information I need uh, by reading the online version of the documentation. Documentation, which is also likely to have the most up-to-date version of the docs uh, directly from the command line without the need to navigate to the doc site. Uh, additional contacts, uh, additional context, uh, any additional information or context or screenshots. So what we like here is if there is no additional information that you need to put into that section, then let's just put not applicable. Leaving it with empty uh, or leaving it with the, the default value in there, that makes us think, well, has someone looked at it or has someone not looked at it? Uh, so in this one, related issues, uh, I'm going to say not applicable at the minute, but I think there are some related issues that uh, perhaps a community member or a um, uh, member of the chocolate team might be able to link to so that we can tie all these uh, issues together. So again, they're all, if there's a couple of improvements around the help document, help command that I think that we can make. Um, so we would group those together by inter interlinking the issues. Uh, and then, the, then we need a title, so we need a, a descriptive title. So in this one, we want to say, uh, provide ability to navigate directly to online version of help documentation for a command. Okay, uh, now I, as a contributor and maintainer of the repository, I can do other stuff to this issue. So I can do stuff about assigning issues, assigning labels, projects, et cetera. Uh, any outside contributor wouldn't be able to do that. So typically it's just a case of filling in the title and the description and clicking submit new issue. Um, so that's all I'm gonna do. Um, that's all I'm gonna walk through at this point because normally you can't do anything else as an ex external contributor. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit, and hit submit new issue there. Now, what's going to happen uh, on the other side of this is that um, anyone in the team or any uh, community member will have been getting notifications at this point. So folks in the chat room, Corey, James, Rain, they'll likely have all got notifications to say, oh, there's been a new issue created. Uh, now, sometimes that will garner an immediate response from the team, but uh, more likely uh, it will sit uh, in a queue effectively. Uh, waiting for someone to take a look at that and say that, oh, that's a great idea. Uh, but this is the opportunity to ensure that you've got buy-in to this. So what might happen, for example, and hint, hint, uh, someone in the chat room, uh, someone might come along and say, well, oh, this is a great idea. How about we assign you to the issue so that we know that it's been assigned to someone? So for example, what um, Corey might do is he might come along and he might assign me this issue because this is something that I want to undertake. Uh, now, not we can't always do that um, because you might need to be an external, marked as an external contributor to the repository before we can assign it to you directly. But typically what we might do here is uh, we might have an, inter, an, inter, uh, an exchange and say, oh, we think this is a great idea. How do you, you want to submit a, a pull request to that effect? Uh, so at that point, within the history of the issue, uh, we might see that uh, someone's been given this issue. Uh, so Cody didn't quite make it, but Rain uh, came in and said that uh, I've been assigned to this, so that's great. Um, and then Cody's come up along and said, hey, get 13, uh, that's a great idea. Uh, how would you like to try your hand at this improvement? And I can then say, well, that's a great idea. Let's do uh, ta-da. And then let's also put the rocket on to say, sure, that we're going to go for it, right? So this is something that we as a team uh, are happy or we would want to see, uh, just reading the chat, sorry. Um, the, uh, this is something that we as a team would welcome as a contribution. So now I can go to the next stage, which is, well, let's, let's make a code contribution. So again, I as a contributor to Chocolatey Choco, I, I can push directly to this repository, but anyone else who, is an external contributor, they won't have that luxury. 
So the expectation is that we're going to create a pull request for that work from an, a fork of this repository. Now, because of the way that we work internally, we actually also do that for our work as well. So I already have a fork of this repository, but if you didn't, you would be able to come up to here uh, in the fork section up at the top right here and create a new fork of this repository uh, or use an existing one. So as I said, I've already got one. So that means that I could start work on this thing, right? Now, I this is a brand new VM that I've got here. Um, so I don't actually have the chocolatey repository uh, cloned, or, or I, I, I don't have it on this machine. So I'm going to need to put it on here. Now, what I did do ahead of uh, this stream starting is I did install a few things. So I got Visual Studio installed. I got Git installed. I got VS Code installed. Uh, it brought down a bunch of dependency packages, etc. So I'm in a position where I can clone the repository, but I haven't done it yet because I wanted to show again the end-to-end -end process of how we would do this. So where I would start is I would start by cloning my fork. So my fork lives over on GIP 13. So through the GitHub user interface, I can, now I'm going to show this from uh, Git command line, because that's where I tend to do most of my work. Uh, but if you're using uh, IDEs like Fork or Git Kraken or try to think of another one, whatever your preferred uh, Git IDE of choice is, then there are ways to clone the repository down onto your machine. But I'm going to do it from the command line because that's what I use. So in this case, I can go to um, this code button here and I can say, oh, well, I want to clone it over HTTPS and this is the URL that I need to use. So from the git command line, I can then do git clone that. And that's going to bring me down my fork of the repository. Now, once I've got that, I can CD into that, right? And if I do a git remote minus V, I can see that the only remote that I have set up here is my origin, my fork, right? Now, if you read through some of the uh, contributing guidelines that we have on the website or, or on the repository, what it's going to do is it's going to suggest that you create a new remote, which is the upstream uh, to the original repository, Chocolate Choco. And the reason that we would suggest that you do that is that we can then, um, you, you can keep up to date with uh, any changes that goes on in that repository, et cetera. Uh, and if needs be, uh, you can, uh, update your PR branch that you created with the latest uh, that's gone into the repository, etc. cetera. Um, so what that looks like is if I go back over here and click on Chocolate Choco, I can then grab the URL of this repository and I can do git remote uh, add, the up, I'm going to call it upstream because that's the convention that I've always fallen into. And I can add in the upstream uh, remote, which is to Chocolate Choco. And all that does, so if I run git remote minus v again, I'll see that I've now got two, I've got an origin, and I've got an upstream. And at this point, I am in a position where I've got all the code locally on my machine ready for doing stuff with, right? Now, because if you were doing this from, from scratch, you could almost, you could guarantee that this remote, my fork, and this remote, the upstream, we're at the exact same point. But because of the way that Git works, it's a distributed version control system, there's entirely the potential that those remotes are out of sync. There might have been commits made into the uh, Chocolate Choco repository that you need to bring down into uh, your local clone uh, and vice versa. So you need to make sure that your two remotes are in sync before you want to start any work, right? Now, what that means is, again, we cover this in some of our, our some of our documentation. But what it mean, make, makes what I want to do is I want to make sure that I am on the the branch that we want the work to come into. Now, uh, the chocolate chocolate repository again, reading through the contributing guidelines, uh, it requests that unless you are explicitly told otherwise, you want to make a uh, pull request into the develop branch. So if I go over here and look at the uh, active branches on uh, this repository, you'll see that there's both a develop and a master, uh, but the develop one is the default branch. So that's the one that you want to commit your changes onto. Now you'll see that I'm not on the develop branch. 
Now that's because my fork predates the existence of the developed branch. It's quite an old clone, an old fork of this repository. So I need to check out that developed branch. So I can do that using the git checkout develop command. So at this point, I've now got the develop branch uh, and I need to make sure that my develop branch is up to date with the upstream develop branch. So I can do that by first <coughs> fetching any changes from the uh, upstream remote. So there's a few. And then what I can do is I can do a git rebase from the upstream on the develop. Uh, and what that's telling me is that actually on in my current state, everything's up to date. Uh, and what this is telling me is that this is the first time that I have uh, done anything with Git on this machine, and I need to sign in into this browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop my share just a second. Oh no, hold on, I was already signed into GitHub, so it's maybe gonna let me in. Authentication succeeded. Okay, cool. So uh, I can close that tab because that didn't ask me for uh, username and passwords. So at this point, my clone or my fork of the uh, chocolate chocolate repository is up to date with what's in the upstream. So I'm in a position to start doing some work. So again, uh, reading, if you go to the contributing guidelines, our recommendation is that any work is done on a branch off of develop. There's good reasons for doing that. We're not really going to cover that too much uh, in this stream tonight. But um, it's just harder to uh, accept contributions and make suggestions on contributions if it's not done on a branch. So the recommendation would be to always do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do in, I'm going to check out a new branch, and I tend to name the branches. Uh, and associate them with the uh, issue that I'm uh, contributing to. So in this case, the issue number is 2867. So when I create my branch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name it issue uh, 2867. And then as a rough indication, I'm gonna say help online. And that will uh, help me when I'm looking back at my branches, which one was I actually working on? And just for the sake of completeness for the, the git command, I'm going to specifically state that I want that branch to come from the develop branch. So at this point, if I do git branch again, then I'll see that I've now got three branches here. I've got the develop one, I've got the master branch, which is where we started, and I've now got this new one, which is the one that I'm going to actively work on. Okay. So then what we need to do is if I want to open Visual Studio. Now, currently, Visual Studio 2019 is needed in order to uh, easily build the solution. Uh, I think we can or could get it to work under 2022 with some work, uh, but Visual Studio 2019 is the one that I would recommend at the minute. So I would want to go ahead and open this solution in Visual Studio. Now, if I were to attempt to build this uh, solution in Visual Studio as it currently stands, it will not build correctly. Uh, now that's documented in the uh, contributing guidelines as well. Uh, within there, there's a section about building the solution. The reason is that there's a missing file that we generate as part of our um, repeatable uh, orchestrated build that we have. Uh, and we generate that not through Visual Studio, but we generate it uh, from our command line build that we use. So what we need to do is at least once we need to run the, uh, it's trying to keep up. I need to run at least once uh, the build.bat file, or if you prefer the build.ps1 file that is located in this repository. So I'm gonna kick that off. Uh, so what that's going to do, just to give a, while that's running, we use a build orchestration tool called uh, Cake to do all of the things that we need to do. So that includes uh, cleaning up all the artifacts of a previous build. It includes uh, running a compilation with MS build of the solution that we're working on. It includes running unit tests. 
Uh, it includes uh, IL merging some of the artifacts that we create as part of the build. Uh, it includes running some uh, stack analysis on some of the, uh, the the projects in there. It includes generating uh, NuGet packages. It includes generating chocolate packages, etc. So we use the orchestration tool known as Cake to do that work. And one of the things that it will also do is that it will generate that missing file that would ultimately fail the build within Visual Studio. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to sit and watch uh, this build run in its entirety because it takes a couple of minutes. Um, but the end result of that should hopefully be a successful build. Uh, and that would give us a set of artifacts that we would ultimately be able to uh, make use of. Uh, but for now, because the build has gotten past the point that I know that is uh, needed, we can then go back to Visual Studio and the build within Visual Studio itself uh, will also work. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that. And I'm going to do a control shift B here, which is to uh, run uh, the build within Visual Studio. Now, the build with Visual Studio is a much more contained build because all we're doing there is the MS build portion of the work. We are, we're not doing all of the other things that our uh, orchestration of the build using Cake is doing. So it's, it's a little bit faster to run uh, because it is that much more constrained version of uh, the build. So we got down here that the build was successful and the build succeeded, okay? So what do we do next? Um, what we need to do next, uh, I'm just conscious of the time, so it's half, it's half past nine. Um, so I've got a little bit of time yet. <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to figure out how we can start debugging into this. What do we need to do to start executing uh, chocolate.exe? Uh, from Visual Studio so that we can take advantage of the uh, debugging capabilities within Visual Studio to then start extending the functionality. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to look for where is the current implementation of the help command. So because I know where that is, I could navigate directly to uh, chocolatey infrastructure app commands and then the chocolatey help command. <clears throat> if you didn't know the structure of our code base, then you can just go up into the Solution Explorer and type, for example, help. And then that will drill down to the class names that have help in the name. And then you would be able to find the help command from there. Uh, there's some tests that are associated with that. But for now, we'll just skip over the tests. And then in there, you would find the, uh, OK, so helpfully, each command has a help message method within it. Uh, but you would ultimately find the chocolate help command as well, which is this one, okay? So with this in play, this is the C-sharp implementation of the help command. So if we go back over here, uh, in fact, let's open up another one so that we can play around with uh, chocolate at the same time. So in here, if I run that choco help command again, so choco install dash H, that is the one that fires this command over here. So what I want to be able to do as a starting point is I want to set some breakpoints in here so I can see what's going on, OK? Uh, so the one that I think I'm interested in is getting to this one. There's a display help message here that does stuff. So I think what I'm going to want to do is set a breakpoint perhaps here uh, but I also might want to set a breakpoint, say, on the run method. Um, and because I'm interested, oh, what, what's that one? Do? Let's just set a couple of breakpoints in order to see what's going on. Let's set another breakpoint up here to see what's going on, okay? Now, what I want to do is, well, what do I need to do to invoke Choco.exe from here and have it do something? So there is a big start, big green button up here. So anybody familiar with uh, Visual Studio, there is a big green start button, and that will trigger the project to be executed under debug mode, uh, which for the project that is set as the uh, default project for the solution. So the project that I navigated into to find the help command was the chocolate project, but that's not actually the entry point for chocolate, the chocolate.exe. The entry point is the project that's called chocolate.console. That's the one that actually generates the chocolate.exe. Uh, the chocolate project is the one that generates 
the chocolate.lib.dll, the, 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 the assembly that contains the API for what is chocolate. So the one that we want is uh, chocolate.console. And like I say, if it wasn't, if it wasn't uh, in bold, you could right click on it and say, uh, set a startup project. Now it's already done for us, so we don't need to worry about that. So if I just hit start here, it's going to compile the solution if it needs to, uh, and it's going to invoke the uh, chocolate.exe that's generated as part of that build, and it's going to show us what the output is. Now the output of running just chocolate.exe, so if I go back over to my uh, window here and hit CLS, if I run choco, what I get is, well, here's the chocolate build number being output, and then a helpful uh, message here that is, please run choco dash question mark or uh, question mark, which is a, an alias for dash H uh, for the help menu. So I'm seeing the exact same thing from uh, the output from Visual Studio, but what I'm also seeing is some additional uh, debug output that I typically don't see <clears throat> in the main chocolate output, but that's because I'm running it under debug mode. And you'll also see that I've got a different version number here, but that's solely to do with the um, the fact that I'm not running the official version of Chocolatey. And I'm also seeing a debug build output here uh, as, again, a helpful reminder that we're not running the official version. But what I want to do is I want to debug into me running Choco install dash H, right? So I, I want to debug into that one to see what's going on. So what we can do is I can hit enter there to close this down, and then I'll get back to Visual Studio over here. So what I can do is I can right click on the chocolate console and hit properties. And then if I go over to the uh, debug section of here, then this is where you're controlling what happens when I click this big green button. So in my case, when I click that big green button, I want to start the project, but I also want to pass in some additional command line arguments. So in that case, I can do install dash H. That's why I typed in the command line. And by invoking those command line arguments into here, when I click the start button, those arguments are going to be passed through. <clears throat> and at that point, hopefully, I should trigger one of those breakpoints that I set within my help command. Now, it didn't do that. Oh, no, I understand why it didn't do that. Because I have not it's not doing that one, okay? So let me try and explain that. So let me do, let's go back to here. I'm gonna click, press enter, continue out of there. Actually, what, for the breakpoint that I want, to, the, for the breakpoint that I've set, the command that I actually want to run is choco help, right? So let's change this up a little bit. And let's do just choco help here. And let's debug that again. And at this point, I should get into the choco help command with a breakpoint, and it'll stop the execution, and it'll show me what it got to. <clears throat> so each of these uh, virtual methods uh, are entry points, and they each one of those will get called based on the top level, what we refer to as the generic runner within Chocolate. So we don't we don't need to dig into those details just now, <clears throat> but uh, at this point. If there was any argument parsing that I needed to do, then this is a method that I could do specifically for the help command. And then once that part's done, we'll then call into this method, which is, does this command require admin access? Because certain things in Chocolatey, we know that, say, doing a, an installation of a Chocolatey package, that does require admin access. For the help command, we know that it doesn't do that, so uh, Chocolatey can uh, constrain what the access requirements are uh, based on that and take the appropriate action when it needs to. And then if I click continue again, then we get into the run of the help command. And this would take us down into the display help message. Uh, so if I go down into that one, then I can uh, step through that code. And at this point, this is what would output the top level help command to say, this is what you can and can't do within Chocolate. So if I just let that play through, we'll see that output, uh, and that's the top level help. But what I'm interested in at the minute is looking at extending the individual 
uh, commands with that dash dash online option. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'll come out of this one. So what I'm going to do, let's use the uh, install command as the uh, option that we're going to extend initially. So let's go back over to my help command and let's find the install command. Now in here, we'll find that there is another overridden method, uh, which is the help message. And that's the one that outputs the help specific information for that install command. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Uh, and I'm going to go back into my properties. And I'm going to change this a little bit again to be install dash h. Now, if you bear with me one second, I'm going to go and get a drink. And I'm going to come back in just two seconds because I've got a nickel in my throat and it's not going to go away unless I drink something. So give me one second, talk amongst yourselves, and I'll be back in just a second. Sorry about that. Let's be back. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name in the chat, but Dorif2, hey, good to have you along. <clears throat> so I've changed the properties of the uh, command line arguments again. And this time when I debug into this, <clears throat> what we should get to is the uh, into that help message. I want to display that help message because that's what I've asked for. So at this point, this is where I get the display of the help for the install command specifically. And this is where I would be able to make uh, an entry point for whether I want to go to the online uh, documentation or whether I want to print out the um, specific implementation at the command line. So let's let that play through and we'll see that we get that output. Great. Now, if we look through here, you'll see that currently there are all of these options available for the install. But what there isn't is a dash dash online option. We'll see that there's a dash H option here, but there's not a dash dash online option. So what we want to do is we want to add an additional online option so that we can take an action based on that being set. Okay, so what does that mean? <clears throat> so we close that out again. If we go right to the top of this install command, we'll see that there's a method here that is configure argument parser, right? So the way that chocolatey works is it has the concept of top level options that are available to every single command. So the example there would be, if we go back to, oh, let's just, that was the build that we started a while back. It's now finished. So it got down to the bottom here, and these are all the steps that it did. It ran an end unit, it generated a, a test coverage report, it did run and spec code, it did some IL merging, it created some chocolate packages, created some NuGet packages. <clears throat> and the end result of that was a fully built system. Right, so the build worked. the The build orchestration of Cake worked and got to completion. So we're finished with that now. Okay, so I'm actually just going to close that one out just now. So over on this window, if I were to go back and look at Choco install dash h, then what we'll see in these outputs is that pretty much all of these ones from the top here. So debug, verbose, trace, no color, except license, yes, force, no op, limit output. All of those options are available to every single chocolate command. They might not actually do anything because it doesn't need to do it, but, or it doesn't need to do anything, but those command line options are available to every single 
command that's executed, right? Uh, but once we get further down here, when we start talking about uh, log files, when we start talking about what source is going to be used for the install command, what version is going to be used for the install command, those are options that are specific to the Choco install command. So what we need to do is we need to add the dash dash online option to every command. So based on what I just said there, I think we need that um, option to be a global one. We don't want to set it specifically on the command line argument parser or the con configure the argument parser <coughs> for the single command, but we want to add it to every command because every command is going to have a help output. <coughs> and as a result of that, every command is going to have an online option of that documentation as well. So what we need to do is we need to find out where those global options are set. So again, I'm, I might know where that lives because I am a contributor and maintainer of the project. But if you weren't, then one way that you could try and find that <coughs> is by looking through something that I can search for within the code base. So for example, this. Something within our code is outputting that message there. So if we go ahead and search for that. Then somewhere in the code base, we should find that. And that's, there's only one instance of it, and it's there. So in here, here's a method that says set global options. So we're adding, this is where the global options are configured for every command that's available. So what I'm going to suggest is that we should add it option into this place. Right. That means that when in the help output, we're going to uh, add in a new one that is right in around here. So dash d dash dash debug is being output right here. Right. Uh, now we might think, well, where is the print out the help menu coming from? So again, let's search for that. Let's bring that in. We'll search for it, and we'll see where that is. So why is that one in a different place? That one's in a different place uh, because. We only want to add the add help only once it's saying. So if the option set count is equal to zero, go ahead and add in the help. So we always want to have the help option available. <clears throat> so it's always there. Uh, I see a question uh, in the chat there. Uh, sorry for being late. That's not a problem at all. Uh, what are we trying to do? <clears throat> what we're trying to do here is we're, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to show how I as a, external contributor might make a change to chocolatey. So what we've done is we've talked through the process of uh, creating an issue, uh, getting some buy-in from the team and having an issue assigned to me. And then we've walked through the process of uh, clone, uh, forking the repository, cloning the repository locally onto my machine. And then now we're at the point where we're actually executing uh, or trying to make some changes to the code base to achieve what we're trying to achieve. And th in this instance, what we're trying to achieve is at the command line, what I want to be able to, to do is I want to be able to do uh, choco install dash H, and I want to be able to pass in also the dash dash online option. And hopefully what that would do is the equivalent of what we can do in uh, PowerShell. So I can do uh, get help, get command dash online. And what that would do is open up the help page in my default browser to point to the online version of the help. So rather than relying on the help being output to the command line, what I want to be able to do is to do the same thing for chocolatey help commands. And I'm going to do that by adding the dash dash online option to every command that exists within Chocolatey. And I'm at the point where we're just walking through how we can figure out how to do that. OK. Um, where did you come from? Let me back over there. Um, so what we searched for there was the uh, verbose outputs. So let's just go back to that so we can find out where that was again. So what I'm going to suggest is I'm going to add a new option into my option set. Uh, so I'm going to do that by following the structure that we've got here before. Uh, now, when we provide uh, uh, an option 
on chocolatey, typically there is both a single character version of it and a stubbed out full version of the command option. Um, in the case of this one, it would be something like O bracket. No, where's my L on this keyboard? And it's not there either. I'll find it eventually. There we are. And then online. But I know for a fact that we are already using the single version O elsewhere. <clears throat> so for this one, I'm going to say we're just going to use the single <clears throat> full expansion of that option to do something because bad things will happen if you intermingle the dash O in multiple commands. It just becomes uh, difficult to um, navigate um, this the, the command structure. So we, we don't want duplicates of the single uh, command option. Uh, Darif2 is saying, so I will re-watch the full stream tomorrow. Perfect. No, not a problem at all. <clears throat> uh, uh, but James is asking, and there's no difference here between single and double dashes. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, what I was referring to there was, in theory, I could do choco install dash h dash o to help take me to the dash the, the online version of the code. But I'm going to say dash o here, the single version representation of it is already used elsewhere, so I don't want to duplicate it. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to have the dash dash online option. Uh, so Rain's saying double dashes generally used for uh, full word arguments, I think. That's correct. And single dash usually accepts a single character argument uh, for or a list of uh, yes, absolutely. Single is for abbreviations, correct. Uh, you could probably want to avoid delving into argument. Yes, I agree with that too, Corey. Uh, I'm mostly just curious that there's no difference, no differentiation. I, for some reason, thought that there was a double, single, double diff between the arguments. Um, I, for some reason, thought that there was single, double diff between the args. Um, so, for historical context, um, for historical context, um, chocolatey, chocolatey's command line parser will accept, as an example, pre with a single dash and dash dash pre with a double dash, even though technically the only valid one is that one. Right now, we we've, we've left that in for historical reasons, because originally chocolatey was a PowerShell module that got converted into a, a C sharp executable, and PowerShell by default would do something like that. It would do single dash online, whereas norm. Um, oh, well, let me be careful. There's some PowerShell folks on the call. Um, while PowerShell uses a single dash for a full argument representation, other ecosystems use a single dash for a single character, i.e. dash H, and then they would have a double dash for the fully spelt out option version. So for other ecosystems, these two options would be the equivalent, right? But in chocolatey, for historical reasons, we accept both of those as the same thing. But we also allow the combination and the combin combinatorial explosion of single character options. For example, dash D, dash V, and dash F. So single character D, V, and F is the equivalent of dash dash debug, dash dash verbose, and dash dash force. But the single character options allow chaining of the options together. <clears throat> but for this command, or for this command option, I'm only going to allow the usage of the fully spelled out one, which is the dash dash online version of it. Okay. And Rain, oh, that's a that's a admission there from Rain that PowerShell broke the rules when it went for uh, single dash uh, options. Um, 
I wasn't expecting to hear that, but okay. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm only going to allow the dash dash online option uh, to be used here, right? So then what we need to do is we need to uh, stub this out a little bit more. So what we then need to do is we then need to provide the uh, description. So we're going to spell this out as description. Uh, and then we're going to say here is uh, open help for specified for specified command in default uh, browser application. Okay. We, wording's hard. We can come back to that to stub that out. Then what we've got here is option. Uh, so what we're doing here is, well, what do we want? So once our command line parser has correctly identified that the dash dash online option has provided, what do we want to do? So if we use here the example of the dash dash debug, so when someone passes in, passes in uh, dash D or dash dash debug, what our command line parser is actually going to do is it's going to set the debug configuration option, which is then used within the rest of the execution of the chocolatey code, is it's going to set that to option is not equal to null. So it's assuming that the provided uh, uh, switch in this case is there and it's not null, we'll set the debug to that option. So effectively, it will become true or false, right? Um, so what we need, so if I just try typing this out, so I'm going to have config dot, let's just go with online. Uh, I'm going to say is equal to option, not equal to null. Now that is going to be screaming at me that I need to fix something. So the screaming here is the red under, under, underscore squiggly. <clears throat> so what this is effectively saying is that that option doesn't exist on my configuration object. And it doesn't because I've, it's a brand new one that I've just created, right? Um, let me just catch up in the chat here a little bit. Um, Rain saying, uh, at some point, uh, we, we or I, uh, uh, I being Rain, wants to rewrite the argument parser. I don't disagree with that at some point. Uh, I could have phrased that better. Um, in my defense, I'm eating a delicious pie. Lovely, Jim. I've got a can of Diet Coke. That's all I've got. Um, PowerShell broke the rules. Uh, see also people annoyed in PowerShell's uh, RM not supporting dash RF. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Yes. So the, they're the, they some folks want the single character chaining of the options. Uh, a few folks have been very annoyedly talking to the PowerShell team about this the last few months. Interesting. Okay. Uh, will be more config help module online. Will be more config help module online. Uh, so I'm not sure what you're referring to there, uh, Dara. Do you before to expand on that? Uh, I'm certainly. Um, happy to I think maybe what you're referring to is that this by itself doesn't reflect what's actually going to happen so maybe the config option would be better saying something like show online help so within the code we can um stub that spell that out a little bit more but the option is still dash dash online so possibly that makes more sense yes so what I need to do is I need to go ahead and create that property on the configuration object. So the way that I can do that is I can just go to an existing property. So in the case of debug, I can go and hit F12, and that will take me to where that is defined on the chocolate configuration object. So in here, I could go ahead and add a new one, which is a public bool, which is the show online help, and then that's going to have a getter and a setter. So with that in play, if I switch back to here, that show online help is now going to be there. So we're making progress. We've now got, uh, potentially, we've got a configuration that we can now set and make decisions about stuff when we start using it. So let's go back to our install help here. 
Um, and we're going to see where it's executing the help message. So we've still got this breakpoint here on the help message for um, the install command. So let's go ahead and just check what uh, we were running. So we're still running um, install-h. So if I go ahead and run this just as is, we should hit that breakpoint. And what we should see is that that show online help configuration property should be false. So if we go in here and we go to this configuration object and we expand that and we look for the uh, show, it's down here, let's do this, show online help, let's pin that so we can see that at the top so we don't have to scroll all the time. So we pin that up here. So show online help is false. Now that makes sense because we didn't pass in that option. But what we will see if we if we let that play through, if we scroll back up to the top here for the help documentation for the install command, because we added that option to the top level option set, we are seeing that there is a dash dash online option available now. And it's taken the description that we provided <clears throat> and it's output it for that command. Okay, so that's for the install uh, command. But because we added it where we added it, if we go in here and say upgrade, as an example, we won't get a breakpoint this time because we haven't got a breakpoint in the upgrade command. But we should see the dash dash online option for the help. So if we scroll back up here, then again, we have the dash dash online option. Now I've put it in the same place as the help. Uh, with, so that's basically a visual cue to say, here's the help. And if you want the online version, you can use the dash dash online option. Okay. So we're making progress. So let's test this out a little bit further. So let's go back to our install command. And this time, let's also pass in the dash dash online option. So let's see if that part is working. So we'll go ahead and hit start here. Now we're at 10 o'clock. So I'd said to myself that we were going to finish around about the 10.30 uh, my time. So now at 28 minutes, we're going to finish up, mainly because I need to go and walk my dog. Um, so I've got about 28 minutes left of the stream, and then we'll wrap up, and I'll go and walk my dog, and then I'll go to bed. So if I hover over this again, uh, I can already see that the show online help option is now true. So now it's making that informed decision about whether or not um, that property is set based on that command line switch being added. So we've got into a point where we can now do something based on that. So that something would be as simple as, for example, uh, if configuration dot show online help then in here we would do something and then we would immediately return so let's just do for example this dot log this is not what we would do obviously but let's just uh carry on with this part of it so in here we could say open browser to online help page right if we save that and run this again, this breakpoint should never be hit. <clears throat> so it will never get to the point of printing the help at the command line, because instead what it's going to do is it's going to open the default browser to that page. OK? But that didn't work. So why is it still outputting the, I'm confused by that. Did it? Let me hold on. What did I do? Open browser to default. So it did do that part, but why did it not return from that function? Why did it still output that? Oh no, hold on. This is maybe not the right this is maybe not the right place to do this. Hold on a second. Let me think. Um Uh, sorry, there's a comment from Durf2 again. Was thinking about this to avoid the global pollution, but you are only one arg passed to the help function. 
Correct. Yes. Uh, what's happening here is because of the command structure within Chocolatey, there's it, it outputs multiple things. <clears throat> now, what I mean by that is it will output the um, common code, the common help documentation, and then this help message is actually saying, give me the help message that's specific for the um, command that you're running, and then I'll stitch it all together. So this part here, we're actually putting this in the wrong place. We don't want to put this here. Instead, what we want to do is we want to go and find the place where it's outputting this part, which is where we were before in the configuration builder. And at that point, we want to make the informed decision about whether we're going to output the uh, entire help documentation or whether we're going to only give the or, or whether we're going to go to the online version. So we're not quite in the right place yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and find where this is. There's a, there's a reference here. So where's this? It would be in here. So what we're doing here is here's the generic runner that I mentioned before. We're going to run the command that's being executed. And if it starts with, or if help is being requested, then we are going to do stuff. And then in here, we're going to call the help message for the command. But what we're going to want to do is something else. So let me just think about this. I, I hadn't thought about this part, but let me just give me a second just to think about it. So, so this is the, the generic runner that is calling into the command that's been created. And the command is So show help message if there are any left. That's not what we want to do either. Unparse arguments. Parse arguments and update configuration uses set options. So the after parse is there. So that's where we provide the validations. This one here is the command rx configuration set options and then the after parse. So it's going to be in here, I think. Um, so in here, I think what we want to do is we have access to config here. So we would want to do config dot help requested. So effectively, what I want to do is if someone is specifically asking for help and the option is show online help, then we want to output this and then we want to return and not do anything else. So let's give this a try and see what this does. So we are requesting help and we are requesting show online help. So at this point, I would expect to see just that one line output, I wasn't expecting it to get into there. Okay, so we, we've got, we're, we're, we're halfway there. 
So we did this part, but we shouldn't be requesting the help for it. So what did I miss? So back to here. Um, so the return there, oh, because this one then does something else. And that something else is... It well, it is and it isn't. So, um, so uh, there's a comment there from Duruf two. Um, so each of these are uh, functions that get called from within the parse arguments and update configuration. So if we are actually go there, then in here we do stuff and we call the um, the actions that are associated with it. So you're right in the sense that. Um, you're right in the sense that the, the 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 value that I was asking for. No, let me let me try this. Explain this a different way. So you're right in what you're saying in the sense that the which one was it? That you're right in the sense that help requested is being set to true here, but it's being set to true here because there if it's if the feature for not ignoring uh, invalid options is not set, then chocolatey will happily accept any options that it doesn't know about. But if that feature is not set, then if there are any unparsed arguments, we want chocolatey to halt and show the um, help documentation because the command that's been input is effectively wrong. So here we're explicitly setting help requested to be equal to true, but the virtue of adding the dash H parameter also sets the help requested to true, if that makes sense. So um, let me go back to where I was. Uh, so let me go back to here and say, uh, go implementation again. So in here, yeah, here. So if the dash H option is passed in, that help requested is being set. So in this scenario, where I want to... This here. Right. Okay. So this is where we want to do it. So we're, we're getting there. We, I think we're going to get there in the end. So again, I'm going to take this part out of here because that's not quite the right place to do it. And in here, I'm going to say if the configuration, oh, if configuration is requested, so we've already got that part, so we're in there. So if config configuration dot show online help, then I don't have access to a log there because. I don't have access to a log. This must be a static class, is it? Yeah, it is. Okay, so that's why we don't have logging there. So let's let's just take that part out just now then. So in here, rather than show help, we're just going to return. So okay, so let's see if this works. Might have just got there. Right. So we're running this with dash H, with dash dash online. Uh, so what we're going to see is effectively nothing. But if we had the code, it would have went and said, let's open up the browser to that uh, help instead. So I think we're at a point where we have what we want. So in here, what we want to do is we want to open the browser. Now, this is the part that I didn't fully look into because um, I wasn't sure how far we were going to get to it. But according to a quick Google that I did, um, it should be as simple as calling uh, explorer.exe with a URL, and that should cause uh, your default browser to be opened with what to the URL that you've specified. So as a very, very crude test, what we could do is start a new process. Uh, 
now. I, I, I need to remember how to do that because <laughs> it's been a while. Um, but effectively, what I think we want to do is... Uh, let me just Google quickly. Uh, .NET process start explorer.exe. So this is probably not the way that we are going to do it, but just so that we could have something to um, play with, let's see if we can't have a play. Uh, process to start. So effectively what we want to do in here, let me just open up the chat again, just to make sure that no one is talking. Uh, so what we want to do is not on that line. Let's go here. And we're going to do process.start. Uh, so that process is clearly not the process that it thinks it is. So that's the chocolate process. So that's not the one that we want. We want system.diagnostics.process. That will have a start method. And that takes, as an option, that takes the file name, which will just hopefully be process.explorer.exe. And then the arguments are the path. So let's give that a try. So let's do, let's see if this even just works. Let's do explorer.exe. And then in here, we want to open up, or we're going to pass in a command line, which is going to be docs.chocolatey.com org. Uh, let's go back over here to make sure that we get the right URL. So the URL that we want is this one. And we paste that in there. Now what we don't know at this point is string.format. We're going to want to take the command that's being passed in and we're going to string format it into here. Uh, and then that in here is going to be configuration dot command name. So in the case of the install command, it should just be install. So let's set that there and cross all our fingers. And maybe this might just work. But let's see where we get to. Um, Okay, so at this point, the command name is install. That's going to be string.formatted onto that URL. That's going to invoke explorer.exe. And I think that should open up the default browser and point me at the installation help documentation page for that command. Now, I wasn't necessarily expecting that to work first time, but... I'm kind of glad that it did. So let's test that out a little bit. So let's go back to here um, and let's close that. And let's change the command that we're executing slightly. So we'll do, let's use the export command as an example. So this time around, we're going to do export dash h dash dash online. Let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. I might take the breakpoint out so we don't hit the breakpoint. Um, but let's do this let's take who out so that it doesn't hit next time and see what happens so now it's gone to the export page and we're seeing the help documentation for the export so we need to test the other part of the happy path and make sure that you haven't broken anything else so back into here where we're debugging things let's take the online option off and what we would expect to see at this point is the help documentation written to the command line as it was before. And there we go. Okay, so we haven't broken that side of stuff. Uh, but what we have done is we provided the ability to provide an additional switch, which is dash h dash dash online. And let's use another one as an example. So let's use um, outdated. And let's do start that process. So this time it should open up the default browser to the outdated page, which it does in a new tab. Winning, yeah, I thanks James. Um, so we have a and non-existing command. That is a great test there. Um, let's see what that does. Ooh, that's a great test case. Um, 
I think you might be onto something there, Durf too. Um, I'm not sure if the current implementation will do anything. So Durf two as a command, what happens there? That's a great question. It won't be no. I think it will work. Yes. So uh, earlier in that process, in order to be able to run a command, it has to be have it has to have been able to have found a registered instance of the an I command that matches the command name that was passed in. So before it even gets to any of that logic that we've just added in, we've already got handling for that. Uh, so in this case, it couldn't find a command register that meets that of two. So we're good. We haven't again. We haven't broken anything there. Um, ah, oh, I like it. Um, so in the nine minutes that I've got left, how would we close this out? What do we need to do in order to uh, put this code back to Chocolate Choco for um, for approving, uh, for communication, for interaction with the team to discuss it? What do we need to do next? So I'm going to take the next nine minutes to finish that side of things off, because then, as I say, I need to go and walk my dog. So if I go and do, uh, I'm going to CD into GitHub organizations, chocolatey choco. Uh, I'm already on the branch that is the associated with the issue. Uh, so what I can do is if I go and look at Git extensions, uh, which is my uh, Git IDE of choice. Uh, if I go and open this up and uh, so what I've got here is I've got three uh, files that have been changed. So in here, what we've got is uh, that was the addition of the online option uh, to our global option set. Then we've got the setting of the show online help property, which the option set is then setting. And then we've got one simple addition at the minute, which is to show the online help. So what we can do is let's just go ahead and, and stage all of these. And when we are creating the um, commit message, there is a fairly standard format that we sort of want the um, commit to come in with, and it's documented in our contributing.md uh, file on the repository. But effectively what that looks like is we want to know on the first line of the commit message, we want to have that set to uh, the, the issue. So in this case, it's the issue two, uh, 287, 2867. And in the first line of the commit message, we want a uh, turn down version of what's being done. So what we're doing here is add uh, dash dash online option to all commands. That we want that first line to be no longer than uh, 50 characters uh, because of reasons, historical reasons again, but that's the format that we've chosen. So if you need to, you can expand on the information that goes into the commit in the body of the commit message. So here we'll say this commit uh, adds the dash dash uh, online option to all chocolatey commands to allow opening of the online help documentation for the command that is being executed. For example, running Choco uh, install dash H will output the help documentation to the console, but running Choco install dash 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 H dash dash online will not output anything to the command line and instead open the default browser to the help documentation for the command. So from our point of view, um, there's literally, you can't put too much information in here. If you if there's something that will help 
future us in terms of knowing what was done within a commit, why it was done, the decisions that were made about the commit or the functionality was being added. You can't put too much information into that commit message. So feel free to add as much as you want, um, uh, as long as it's obviously pertinent to the commit that's being made, but you go ahead and you would add that information and you would commit that uh, to your local repository. And at that point, what we then need to do is we then need to submit that back to uh, the Choco Choco repository as a pull request. So in order for that to happen, I'm going to do a git push at origin. So that's me pushing that commit to my fork. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's going to immediately say, you don't know what you're doing. And git is absolutely correct. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to copy and paste the command that uh, uh, git has given me because I know that it's the one that I actually want. OK, so I've just pushed that to my fork. And if I go to chocolatey choco, it will know that I've done that and it will prompt me to create a pull request. So that's what this uh, yellow banner at the top here is. So if I go ahead and click compare and pull request, uh, it's then going to take me to the uh, uh, web UI to create a pull request. Uh, and what GitHub has done is it, it is effectively taken all of the information that I put into that commit message. Uh, so that's essentially the information that I want to put into here. But you will see that we have a template in place for the pull requests. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the comments and I'm going to put this into the description of the changes section. Uh, for the motivation and context, as I'm going to say is I am trying to, I want to improve the experience of reading the help documentation documentation by providing a dash dash online option to open in default browser similar to what is done by the uh, get help commandlet in PowerShell. Okay, so that's the uh, what it's doing and why. For testing, I could say um, uh, compile code, uh, set debug options to be um, install dash h dash dash online uh run choco.exe uh and see that default browser opens to help page for install command then we could say for example run install dash h uh, and see that uh, help is written to output. And then the other use case that um, uh, Dunf2 come up with is run uh, bob dash h dash dash online and see that uh, command is not. Found. So what we're writing here is essentially how have we tested this? What have we done to test this? And how what can a maintainer of the repository do to also test the uh, functionality that you're providing? Uh, so in here, it's asking for uh, what are we doing? Well, here we're adding a new feature. Uh, it's not a breaking change. Uh, it doesn't include any PowerShell changes, so we want you to take that. Uh, there is a related issue, and the related issue in this case was... Um, the related issue in this case, if I can get to it, was 2867. And then the change checklist is um, we will require a change to the documentation. Uh, the documentation hasn't been updated because the way that this particular documentation change would happen would be done by um, uh, a script that we have to generate the documentation. So I don't need to update the documentation. I haven't added any tests, but we will need to add some tests, but I don't have enough time to do that this evening. Uh, I will cheat a little bit and say that all the new and existing tests, no, I, I shouldn't do that. 
because we haven't run the test and we might have broken something. So we should come back to that. Uh, PowerShell 2, V2 compatibility has been checked. Uh, no, we haven't done that either. So there's some work to be done still. So what I'm going to do here is rather than create a pull request, I'm going to create a draft pull request to indicate to the maintainers of the project that there's still work to be done here. But I've captured the majority of what I would look for. So as a someone who can accept the con contributions uh, to Chocolate Choco, I've done everything that's kind of expected. I've looked at the changes that I've made. I've made a descriptive commit message that uh, uh, shows um, what I've done and why. I've linked that by the virtue of the fact that I've used the GitHub nomenclature to link it to the up upstream issue. I filled in the PowerShell, uh, the PowerShell, I filled in the pull request template. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click the draft pull request here. So what would be the next phase would be that someone on the chocolate team would at some point, now we don't, we don't provide any um, SLAs in terms of uh, when a um, pull request will be reviewed, uh, etc. But we do endeavor to get to them as soon as possible. But at some point in the, uh, the, the project, this will be looked at. Uh, I'll probably get some feedback that says, well, you need to add some tests, and that's perfectly valid. Um, but what we've done is we've gone from end to end. We've, just as a quick recap, and then I'll come, I'll see there's some messages in the chat, so I'll come to them in a second before we close off for the night. Um, what we've done is we've, where we started was we identified that there was something that we wanted to uh, add into Chocolatey. Uh, we opened an issue. We got some uh, buy-in buy from the team to say that this is a good idea. Uh, it's been assigned to me. Um, we've then uh, cloned the repository. Uh, we've, or, or, or rather, we forked the repository. We cloned it locally. Uh, we've jumped into the develop branch. We've made sure that everything is building and uh, working both at the command line for the build and within Visual Studio. Uh, we've created a branch for doing some work. Uh, we jumped into it in terms of being able to figure out how to debug uh, the solution and set breakpoints and do, see what's going on. Uh, we've then uh, looked at the various uh, help entry points to figure out where we need to actually do the work that we were uh, looking to do at this point. We've done that. We've done a very basic implementation of opening up the default browser, and we've tested it, and we've made sure it works, and we've uh, created a commit into our branch. We pushed that branch to our fork, and then from there, we create a pull request back in the chocolate chocolate. So that complete full cycle is what I do and the rest of the team do on a, on a essentially a daily basis. We're, we're working on stuff. We'll create issues. We'll attribute those issues in commits. Uh, we'll open up a pull request. We'll get reviews. We'll get some feedback. We'll uh, uh, re re refactor and iterate on top of that. And this is what we do. So there's a there's a, there's a sort of a hope that uh, external contributors kind of follow the same process because it is documented in our contributing.md file. And I'm hoping what I've shown here is that it's not too arduous in terms of um, creating the issue, getting the buy-in, uh, creating the fork, cloning locally, creating a branch, doing the work, adding the commit messages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, submitting a pull request back, and then eventually, hopefully, that, that pull request would get uh, merged into the code base. Whew, a lot of words there. Um, so I'm going to do a quick uh, browse through the comments that are in the um, uh, chat, and then I'm going to close out for the night. So let me just scroll up a little bit because I've missed a few. Um, so Darth 2 says it worked, it did. Um, Tarmo saying, I've refactored slightly this code to my own fork and covered by testing as well. Uh, here are some tests I have added by myself. So uh, those links, I think, are not showing up and they're not showing up for me anyway um, because, um, yeah, so James is saying that the links were muted, unfortunately. Uh, use links in the format, blah. My own code coverage jumped to 60% after testing that one. Um, I think it was 13% less. Um, ouch, big jump. Out of interest, how frequently do you bring in the changes made in the main develop branch in Choco Choco? Uh, through working on it, a lot of testing has been done end to end integration testing styles, so if possible, it can affect code coverage stats. Uh, I think main command line uh, permutations happen in. So again, those links, unfortunately, have not been linked. Um, you may be uh, teasing me with asterisks at this point. <laughs> this shown. Uh, lots of comments there. It's not shown to me. Uh, that works. 
uh, at github.com before indeed uh, i think the main command my implementations intriguing at the end um so so yeah um so uh, yes there I, I think the what's been referred to there is that Tarmo has done some work on a fork that he has uh, which is a fork of chocolate choco uh, that's doing some stuff that's specific to his uh, requirements uh, and that's great and he's been able to do some work to improve the uh, command line coverage uh, or the code coverage of uh, the chocolate choco repository because as you'll see at the minute uh, our code coverage is sitting at 28 percent um that's not ideal uh we would want some we would want more of that uh, what james is referring to there in the chat is that in addition to uh unit tests and integration tests on the repository we now do have um, what we refer to as end-to-end -end tests or integration tests. Uh, so in here in the test repository, a test folder, you will see now that there is a range of uh, PESTER tests. So these are tests that are fully exercising Chocolate.exe from end-to-end. -end. Um, so they benefit from the fact that they're actually executing Chocolate.exe and we're looking at the output and making sure that things are functioning the way that we expect them to. So those uh, code, uh, those uh, PESTER tests don't uh, flow into the unit coverage metrics uh, on Chocolate Choco, um, but that is something that we are looking to um, expand out on, um, and we welcome any sort of um, improvements in that area in the Chocolate Choco to improve on that, uh, so that any external work uh, gets that functionality back into uh, Chocolate Choco. Uh, we would welcome those sort of contributions back in, absolutely. Um, so for now, uh, that I, I'm done. Uh, I was quite uh, happy to get to a, a kind of a natural stopping point there. I wasn't sure that I was going to get there, um, but we did. So looking at the changes, it was quite. It was only a couple of sm few small changes, uh, but what we have added there is this new uh, dash dash online option, which will result in um, the so. I, I don't know if the cake has been watching the stream. Um, yes, um, that is a, I'll just reply to him here. Very uh, good point. This was done on the Hacktober Fest stream as a very quick, um, as a very quick proof of concept uh, and why the PR was created in draft format. Uh, and then we'll do a wee smiley at the end as well and single line comment. Um, the other, the, the, there's other stuff in there in terms of uh, at this point, while this URL works, um, there's no guarantee that the help documentation will actually live at that URL in years to come. Um, so most likely what we'll actually put in here is the usage of the uh, short link that we have. So again, we have HTTPS uh, colon whack whack uh, C1 slash. So I would expect that perhaps we would do something like this instead, or maybe just help install or something. We would we would create short links for um, each command with the help, and then it would redirect to the place where we know that that documentation lives. So if we ever change the formatting uh, or change the URL format, um, we could bring that through and not have to update the code base. Or we might bring this out as a configuration option, an environment variable or something, so that we wouldn't have to uh, recompile the code each time it, it changes. So there's definitely work to be done here. Uh, this was very much just a proof of concept to show that it does work. Uh, and I was quite happy to see that it did work the way I wanted it to with very little uh, code changes to make it happen. Um, but yeah, so that was the that was the stream. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, stop share here. Uh, I hope that this has been useful. Um, the takeaway from this is not specifically the, the code changes that we've made here, but what I'm hoping the folks can take away from this is this is how we can get involved. This is the kind of level of interaction that we kind of want from uh, folks contributing. Uh, the ability to debug the code, step into it with breakpoints, see what's going on, uh, and provide meaningful uh, updates back into the code base. Uh, I hope all of that has been useful. If you have got any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm available on GEP13 pretty much everywhere. 
Uh, Twitter's a good one. Um, so feel free to reach out there. Or if you've got any specific problems or concerns about chocolatey, um, the Discord channel that I mentioned would be a good place to start. Uh, or you could open up a discussion on uh, the chocolate choco repository in the discussion section up here. Uh, create a discussion there. And we can open up a dialogue with the team, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of ways to get involved uh, with the project. Uh, for now, um, I think that's um, all I've got. Uh, I'm going to go and walk my dog, as I said. Uh, but for now, I'm going to sign off. Um, that's it. Done. Yes, I'm gonna. I don't, I don't think I've got anything else to say. Uh, thanks for all the interaction in the chat. It was really useful. It was really good to see that. Um, if you've got any further comments, then uh, let's follow up elsewhere. Uh, but thank you very much. I am going to head off. Thank you very much. Bye bye.